Alright, time for another DraftPhysics.com video presentation. Alright, so a continuation of a conversation between me and Franklin Who. And, um, you know, he's taken and I, I, I've, he's triggered me, okay? We both used the word trigger, so we both should understand the concept. And, um, and, uh, you know, and now I've triggered him, apparently. Um, in some way. But we'll see if he got over it or not. I haven't played the video yet, um, but it just references the title of my last video was F.U. Franklin Who, because, yes, his response to my model was just so pitifully vacuous and meaningless and useless, in the sense that this whole idea of modeling physics is modeling, you know, puzzle pieces. And you don't question. The question isn't, where did the puzzle pieces come from? That's not the question. The, the test is, can you put the puzzle together? And can the puzzle fit and, and explain the experiments that exist? And that's the obligation, is to fit the evidence. And that's the only obligation, frankly. And it doesn't matter what kind of pieces you use to make your model to make the end product, which is the working model. Um, and so he used the accusation that I was resorting to magic because my model, as I show in the, <laughs> you know, as I show in this simple little preview, um, is so simple. So it's the simplest model of physics. You can't point to any other model that's got simpler elements. I mean, it's really just as simple as there's two things. One is red, one is blue. They do exactly the same thing except they have two separately opposite interactions. When they touch, you know, they one bounces off, one goes through kind of thing. Really simple. So there's only six elements, six total elements to the theory. And he required me to somehow, I was resorting to magic because I claim, yes, the universe is made of things. And I can't explain where the things came from. I'm going to explain how the things work. And he doesn't understand that's the job of physics. Physics isn't a creation theory. Okay, we're not sitting here arguing about how God made it. The argument is there's stuff, really small stuff, and you want to explain how the small stuff works to make the universe that exists. I mean, we know we're all composite objects, right? I mean, I'm made out of cells. I'm not made out of magic or God or any of that crap. I'm made out of elemental bits that all have little functions. And nobody sits there and says, well, where do the cells come from? And what, you know, you don't bother. Where, 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 where's the nerve cell come? Where, where's the spleen cell come from? Where's, you know, it's not the, it's not part of the argument. Uh, because the model takes care of that. Because the DNA molecule, blah, 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 blah. But no one sits there and argues, you know, you're not going to argue biology or, or how two, two elements, uh, two, two atoms stick together. Uh, if you're going to explain how they function, how they stick together, you're not going to sit there and waste your time saying, where did the atom come from? So it was just such a pitifully bad accusation to make that I'm resorting to magic when, frankly, Franklin, uh, my theory has so f much fewer elements than yours. Yours has antiparticles, all kinds of mystical crap in it. <laughs> you know, stuff that I can't imagine where you say it comes from or how it fits the actual evidence. All right, anyway. So I really, I really don't want to do this useless kind of argument. I want to argue about specific subjects. So I brought up the subject of kinetic energy with you. You did a half-ass experiment that I pointed out was half-ass, okay, because you don't know that you have to go four times higher in gravity, get twice the velocity, all that kind of crap. And so, again, your contribution wasn't very useful, okay, because you said, oh, yes, I agree with you. Because I did an experiment that, frankly, was all wrong. <laughs> so I, I don't know what to say. You know, these are real subjects. Um, you can argue the the actual points being raised, and you can argue the experimental evidence. But arguing the existence of the elements, I mean, I'm not going to defend the electron theory. Okay, you don't believe in electrons. That's your business. Okay, but I think the evidence for their existence is kind of overwhelming. But anyway. All right, so let's play the video. With that out of the way, <clears throat> I would have liked to have said that more politely, but when the more I think about it, I mean, he's responding three months later. 
Uh, he doesn't know why I have videos on the web. All my videos, by the way, are on the website. I mean, all the physics videos are on the website. Okay, I'll put this one on YouTube uh, as a courtesy. But, you know, frankly, I have a problem with Google and YouTube running the Internet. And uh, somewhere people have to protest now and then. Uh, or they just keep getting away with it. Welcome back to another debate video between uh, Draft Physics and myself, Franklin Hu. And we have been uh, exchanging videos back and forth, and uh, this video is in response to a video posted by Gary on his website called FU Franklin Who. And you can guess what FU means. So uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure why he didn't post this on YouTube, perhaps because it was filled with profanity, perhaps. Right, so you're drawing another conclusion that's again sort of, I don't know, what's what, I'm afraid of profanity? Uh, I think the only fuck you was in the title, frankly, but um, so he links to some other video, which, okay, whatever. Um, and then he says, oh, he has anti-proton evidence. Well, that ought to be interesting. Oh, Wikipedia. Wikipedia doesn't provide any evidence. <laughs> so what the hell is that? Wikipedia evidence? I'm sorry. Wikipedia isn't an experiment. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to make a note that, you know, it's not a very professional response back. I find that between the dissident world is that, that when the, the only answer... Yeah, yes, well, again, I'm just going to say, if you want me to explain to you how electrons were created and how protons were created, and you call it magic if I say they just exist, and then all I do, all I add to electrons and protons is an elemental force that has the same character. That is, there's electron force and proton force, and the force moves the speed of light. There. That's the whole story of the whole fucking theory. And you call that magic. I'm resorting to magic. So again, I'll say, fuck you. That's a ludicrous, it's an insipid response to why it doesn't work. No, it works perfectly. Explains gravity, explains electricity, explains all the bullshit. And you're sitting there telling me, no, 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 it can't be right because you resorted to magic by having electrons and protons in the fucking universe. Yeah, of course I'm going to be pissed off. What kind of fucking response is that? That's the typical creationist ex response. That's a typical evade the fucking subject response. Cunt. That people have back to your arguments is to basically insult you. Um, that's basically exceed, uh, uh, admitting that. I'm sorry, and this is exactly what you goddamn did, you fucking idiot. You, you don't understand that if you called some dissident theorist, okay, go up to a dissident theorist and then say, your theory resorts to magic. Go ahead and try that and see how often you'll get punched in the face. I mean, punched in the face in the metaphorical. They'll say, well, there's no point in arguing with you, imbecile, because you don't get what the job is here. You know, they don't have anything else better to throw at you other than an insult. So uh, hopefully we won't be doing uh, that too much. And uh, so, Gary, I know you're watching this, and uh, this is going to be... Yeah, the point is, is I watch the videos. I actually pay attention, okay, where you... Sit there, okay, I mean, I, what am I going to say? I've sort of given you an IQ test in the sense that I've my videos are all on the website, right? And then I do review videos on my channel. And you haven't even figured that out yet. I mean, there, you know, the description has like a hundred videos <laughs> listed in it. Then there's a, a comment under every video that's pinned that has a list of, I think, like 150, 200 videos maybe, 100 uh, plus. And you're not getting it? That those are all website links? A, um, I would say a direct attack upon your 2 plus 2 plus 2 physics. And uh, I'm going to directly show you in this video, you know, why is it I think that your theory is wrong. And Yeah, just show me one experimental evidence. Just show me one experiment that my theory can't explain. That's your obligation. So go ahead. Just show me the one experiment it can't explain. Uh, you know, I, I, I would like you to think that I'm doing this as a favor to you because, you know, it's very... So now you're being patronizing and you're saying, oh, why the hostility? Yeah. Let me do you a favor. Uh, read a book. Okay, there. I've done you a favor. Try reading a book. Hard to find people to debate with. No one will take up your $2,000 challenge to uh, discuss these things with you. So, uh, but between us dissidents... Uh, at least uh, we can discuss things. That's perfectly fine. And so, you know... Uh, yeah, I know, but again, what is the point of the discussion if you can't define the battleground? So again, you had a whole discussion about Faraday's paradox 
and you never got around to saying quite explicitly, well, look, it's clear we don't agree on what the experimental outcomes are. You spin one disc, what happens? You spin the other disc, what happens? And you couldn't even get that clear. So if you can't even agree on what the experiments show, then you know you really can't have much of a discussion. I would like nothing better than for you to respond to this video by coming up with a similar video saying, you know, what's wrong with positive electron physics, right? You can go ahead and tear my... I, I don't have to go into any deep physics about it. All I, can, all I have to say is, is what evidence is there? What rational way do I fit a positron into any possible model? Where does it sit in the atom? How does the atom work if there's positrons in it? How, how does it work? How can you mechanically have a system with this pollution of a bunch of antiparticles in the system? I don't know how atoms work. I don't know how magnetism works. How does anything work if there's these little fake positive charges flying around all over the place? And they'd obviously be flying around all over the place when they weigh 2,000 times less than a proton. The whole idea is the protons are stuck in the atom because they're big, massive monsters. Okay, and the electrons are on the outside because they're little light things. If you put positrons in there, how does that make any sense? Where's the where where why isn't there positronic electrical uh, transmission? Why don't we have a positron induction? Because we know it's electrons that are getting pushed around in all the other cases. Whatever. I'm sorry. Okay, you you somehow don't agree that it's electrons that are really being pushed around. <laughs> the electrons get pushed in the wire, not the protons. My theories apart, and I would just absolutely love it, right? Because I want to know why people don't take my theory seriously. You want to know why people don't take your theory seriously. And so I'm going to give you what I think those reasons are. Okay, so let's... let's... Right, and I've given you my reasons against your theory is that it's, yes, you have way too many moving parts. You can't draw me a picture of it. If you can't draw me a picture of it, I don't really... I'm not terribly interested, frankly. You really should be able to draw a physical picture of how the thing works, you know, even metaphorically. I mean, I don't have to draw you a perfect Sasquatch to get the idea, right? I can draw a little stick figure. This represents Sasquatch. Well, I don't understand your field. I don't understand how big giant you, you've made the ether out of big giant things. How the hell could something like the subtlety of a photon travel through a monstrously huge field of clunky giant things. It's just, it's like saying, you know, pigeons flying through uh, Rolls Royces or something. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Get into it. But I'm going to try and keep it short. I mean, it's, it's hard to make short physics videos, but let's get into it. So. so, yeah, you don't have to keep it short for me, frankly. Okay. I'm not the one telling people to make short videos. I'm the one telling people to make videos that um, don't just cite a bunch of stuff as being facts that I have to accept. I'd like to hear why you believe it. And nobody gets to the why they believe it part. Why do you believe in a positron? I mean, somebody said so. The experiment isn't all that compelling, frankly. I mean, okay, <clears throat> uh, we've sent some radiation through a half inch of lead, and there's some positive particles, you know, because they spin the right way to be positive, that get through the lead. All right. And I should assume it's a positron because somehow a proton can't do that. And the reason why I can't do that is some other theory. <laughs> you know, that, you know, I'm going to say, psh, why can't it be a, pro a proton? Back here, I have uh, three points corresponding to uh, your 2 plus 2 plus 2 physics, the three things that are in it. And uh, what's wrong with that, okay? So, nope. yeah, I, and I pointed out in the other video that, again, I don't know why you can't, I, you know, apparently you didn't see the kinetic energy video either. Because I think I pointed out in the kinetic energy video that you got to really put this a little closer to the screen because I can't read any of this. I mean, I can't read it easily. The problem is a compute about. I don't know. Two kind of interaction is non-Newtonian. Well, I, I mean, Newton didn't know what an atom. He didn't know atoms. He didn't know electrons and protons. So, of course, it's non-Newtonian, but it's completely Newtonian in the sense that they're two different objects with two different properties. Yes, I mean, a blue car is different than a red car, right? I mean, I could say, a, I, I could say they're both cars. 
okay um, I could say a truck and a car are the same thing you know they're uh, automotive devices um, but they have different properties so of course they can have it's not non-Newtonian in the sense they obey momentum rules it's just they obey them oppositely they do an, they oppositely react to a circumstance that's not uh, an impossible to understand circumstance triangles are different than squares they'll behave differently put them in the same circumstance the triangle will do one thing the square can do something opposite or squares and circles might be a better example so so well whatever for one so your whole theory is based upon the existence of the force bit and so my first objection and the objection I think most people would have is, okay, Gary, what is the experimental evidence for your force bit upon everything is a fucking piece of experimental evidence. The fact that we're being pushed into the earth right now, the, the whole electromechanical functions are all based on some thing moving the speed of light and fucking Einstein demonstrated it. And all these other people pointed out how it's a quantized amount of energy that's transferred from one object to another object. It's quantized. That means a bit. That means it's in a, a little packet. That's where the evidence is. The speed of light, the speed of gravity, the speed of magnetism, all the same speed, implying it's all the same stuff, doing the same stuff the same way. And this way I'm saying it's doing it is in the very Newtonian way of just transferring momentum. The little tiny force bits have little quantas of energy, little quantas of momentum. They can give their momentum to a force bit of, I mean, to a, to a matter bit of the same uh, structure. And if it's a ma if it's a matter bit of a positive negative, if a, a positive force will give uh, momentum to a positive element, but it won't give momentum to a negative element. So it's just that simple. It's just as simple as the fact that some radiation burns your skin and some radiation doesn't. It's not non-Newtonian. Which your entire theory is based. Okay, now you claim that, yeah, there's lots of evidence for the force bit. You know, it explains charge and slits and... All that other stuff, but uh, no, actually, it doesn't. Oh, bullshit, it doesn't. I mean, bullshit. You won't draw anything. Draw me a two slit experiment and explain how it, uh, and, and use my theory and explain how it doesn't explain it. Oh, fuck. Yeah, there's no communicating on this ground. This isn't, this is bullshit. Because you, if you are just saying that it's a... Stick to one fucking subject and I'll destroy you on that subject, okay? So just stick to one fucking subject. So you brought up the stupid fucking slit experiments, right? And the stupid delusion that fucking goddamn interference happens. Well, I can prove it doesn't happen, okay? Because in the, other, the radar and the radio experiment proves that it's just simple jamming. That there's no interference, there's no destruction of the energy. It is uh, it helps explain existing data that actually doesn't prove that the basis of your thing, the force bit, actually exists. I mean, I have my own theory, for example, and I could say the same things that my theory um, also explains how a charge works. But you know, that in itself is not any distinguishing feature between, say, my theory, which is based on phased waves, and your theory. Yeah, yeah. Again, it's based on this magic in my opinion of this interaction that somehow uh, you know two waves meet each other and uh, somehow the electron is always in phase with all the other electrons and all the protons are always in phase with all the protons so you have to come up with a model that somehow nothing moves in absolute space that somehow it jumps dimensionally in space or something to always be the right amount of distance from each other I mean it gets pretty complicated theory which is based on uh, you know and it's waving in what <laughs> you know, again a medium made of gigantic objects so you're making a little tiny thing go through a medium of giant clunky things can't happen and I've already explained how the checkerboard model doesn't work you can't you can't have clumps of space and have a geometry and then make straight lines in every direction you can't do it on force bits so what exactly straight lines of the same length would count as actual direct evidence well uh, one thing that would count is if mainstream science already recognized the existence of your 
force fit as existing. All right, so whatever. I don't give a fuck about mainstream science. So right there, you're already out of the ballpark. I have to get validated by people who believe in ESP particles. No, I don't. People who don't know what a dimension is. They think there can have four or five or ten dimensions, whatever the hell that is. They don't have to have right angles. They don't have to be physical. They don't have to be real. I mean, I know I don't need uh, conventional approval. That's not the, the whole point of being a dissident, right? So he doesn't even understand what dissidency is in the sense that, well, you can't be a dissident until, you know, you can't have a legitimate dissident, dissident theory until it's approved by conventional physics. <laughs> Shit. Things. For example, if they ran all these accelerator experiments and they're finding this other particle, which is not an electron or po positron or any of the other... Uh, so they don't find any of this stuff. So again, just more bullshit. You believe they actually see these things? It can't show you any evidence of a quark even. Because it's all abstractions. They're assuming the existence of these particles. They are not seeing them. They see an interaction. They say, well, something must have caused it. So Sasquatch. You know, Sasquatch committed the murder. I mean, they're just inventing a process that took place that caused an outcome. They're not seeing it. Uh, you know, particles they found, and if they saw that this particular flavor of particle only comes out of a proton, and this other particular flavor of this uh, of this particle only comes out of electrons, then that would count as direct evidence. That now, this isn't direct evidence, it's not visual evidence, it's not viewable evidence, it's not real evidence. So again, you can show me their photograph of a black hole and say it's real evidence, and I'll tell you bullshit. It's a synthesized pile of crap. Okay, it's completely made a confirmation bias. They just went through the evidence and they said, what, what looks like the right puzzle? I'll take all the puzzles in the world and then I'll redo a puzzle. And, you know, of course you could do that. You could find pieces that fit, but they're not even close to the right puzzle. It's not going to make the right image. Come on. They can just make anything they want up, and suckers like you fall for it. That's not my problem. That's your problem. You're a lousy dissident if you think a dissident should be really impressed with what fucking uh, the LHC says. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Not even close. They're showing up similar to what you have here in your opening screen where, uh, yeah, we, we see this where you have the simulated and we can see like the, the red particles coming out of the red objects and the blue particles coming out of the blue objects. Now to prove the existence of your force fit, um, you would need to do it in a... I, I don't have to prove the existence of anything. Again, all I have to do is show you a model that's simple and it explains the outcomes. That's the job, okay? Again, you think the job is to explain where the proton came from and where the electron came from. No, I don't have to do that. So I've given you, again, I can't make it any simpler, right? This, the model could be a little bit simpler if we take the red and the blue out we just have black and white. So we just have black particles, white particles, white force, black force. Well, that would be the same thing, frankly. Um, so the color does help. Uh, yeah, I mean, somebody might be able to come up with a theory where all they have is electrons and protons to account for charge and uh, just one force in between the two things. But again, I don't see how it's possible to do that. You have to have the two forces to go with the complementary two charges. And I've explained how it does work really well to duplicate perfectly what Maxwell drew. So it's exactly functioning as a charge, and all you need are those four elements. You know, two force bits, two matter bits. And I would argue that no one's come close to making it that simple. Experiment, which is, okay, this is the prediction. Do an experiment where, you know, somehow you manage to take a picture that I can actually see the... Right, so you have to see evidence, but I'm not allowed to require you to show me evidence. I'm just supposed to believe the guys from the LHC what they you know made up the story they made the little red riding hood story they said because they saw a little ghosty image in a cloud chamber <clears throat> i have to accept whatever story they come up with and i don't have to see anything i'm just supposed to believe pathetic force bits in action i mean you're claiming they are matter that they have a, a mass 
So what is the mass of these force bits? It's really small. I don't have to. I'm not sure. I, you know, I, they're the smallest thing in the universe, and you're saying, what's the mass of them? I Do you think that the LHC actually knows the real mass of electrons and protons? Because how exactly do they measure its mass? Do they put it on a little tiny scale? I mean, you're not really getting it, right? There's the, It's really hard to measure the mass of an individual particle. So at best they can do is measure some forces between them. But how could they tell the difference between the gravitational force and a charge force? You know, it'd be very difficult to be able to tell the difference. So I am again, you know, what what is this? I have to tell you? No, I just said that it's it's a hundred times less, a hundred times smaller. Could be ten times, could be a thousand times, could be a million times. Who cares? The it doesn't matter. The point is is the force has the motion and the matter is dead until a force pushes it. And that's what really fits the evidence. It is a Newtonian universe. It's just completely dependent on momentum. And how can we actually... And that's the subject I really want to talk about, right? Where I, I provoked you into to dealing with the subject a little bit. They believe in this one-half mv squared. That's what your conventional physics prove somehow. There's absolutely no physical evidence defending it. And, and you don't think that's significant, that they have no physical evidence, and yet they just keep writing the formula down like it's the truth. Isolate one of them or create perhaps a beam of them. I mean, that, that's one way to, one of the gold standards for determining whether a particle actually exists. That's, that's the least of the standards. No, the real gold standard is that simulation, frankly. Um, that's all I need to do is model it and show how it works. Show that it does work. That's all I have to do. This is whether you can actually form a beam of them. Then you can go run experiments. You could have your beam of red particle bits, and you have your beam of blue particle bits, and then you could go fire them at specific targets. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to do a bunch of nuclear physics in my in my basement, and it's nuclear physics, frankly. No, I don't think I'm going to. So that's just horseshit. And again, it doesn't disagree with conventional notions of electrodynamics. I, as I just pointed out, the model completely creates an object that behaves exactly like Maxwell would predict in terms of charges. It's doing exactly what the charges do in Maxwell's imagination. To show how those things are different. I mean, even the, the fact that you could create such a beam would be very strong evidence that your particle exists. But so, Gary, I ask you this. Uh, what the fuck? We already have laser beams. I'm claiming it's little quantized particles. Einstein would tell you that too, okay? It's clumps of light. You know, Feynman even said it, okay? Feynman, a guy who believed in this abstract wave crap, he even said it. Now, it's better for you to think about it as particles because, yeah, frankly, these devices don't work wavy. Waves don't do that. I mean, he said all that shit. Um, I've responded to what Feynman has said. I've played his video saying the things and explaining how he's wrong. Why don't you do that? So suppose I gave you a billion dollars in all the resources of MIT, Stanford, Caltech, and CERN combined, okay? Suppose I gave you all Right, then I'd do a couple of, uh, you know, simple, I, I'd sit there and have somebody, I'd pay somebody who has the right conditions, and they're going to do the experiments, that the simple experiments, just dropping thing on a scale. You just pick something up and you drop it on a scale. And you say, well, how much does it weigh when it hits the scale? And that's when you're going to figure out that momentum is weight. And weight is pressure. And that's energy. It's just momentum. Everything's just made out of it. So I'll spend uh, one billionth of the billion dollars and basically prove a fundamental element of conventional physics to be an absolute pile of steaming shit. And then I'll do a couple of two slit experiments and explain how, see, they never explained any of this crap. But that's not really the point, right? The point isn't that this needs to be done. The point is, is nobody wants to hear the actual facts. Because I've already demonstrated how the two slit works. And I've demonstrated it clearly and completely in the sense that I can predict exactly where every bar will be and where every bit of light will go. And they don't even come close to doing that accurately. They claim they have the most accurate theory in the history of mankind. And it doesn't get right answers. Two waves don't work. So then why don't I ask you to explain how four waves make sense? 
I mean, I've already drawn all these pictures. I'm no one's responsive to anything actually said in my videos. You just write this crap on the board and say, "There, I've debunked you." Well, no, you really haven't. Those resources. Is there any experiment that you can propose? That can actually, so we can actually see. I don't need any new experiments. The experiments that already exist, the two slit makes a real two slit pattern. There's two patterns on top of each other. There's a double size maxima. They explain none of it. I explain all of it. Huge difference. These force bits in action, right? It's not enough that your theories, you know. Are... I don't have to show them in action. All I have to do is show that they produce what we see and what we see is electrons producing an electron force field and we see protons producing a proton force field that's how Maxwell drew them and that's exactly what the fucking theory produces consistent with existing with, with existing theories uh, you have to go and do a unique experiment which uniquely shows that the result so so again i don't have to i you know none of us should have to do any experiments i mean all kinds of experiments have already been done and yes some things need to be teased out a little bit you know we have to do the faraday experiments a little more carefully so we can explicitly rule out some things but frankly the double slit experiment has been done very well and the truth is they never show the real pattern it's not a single one of the professional two-slit videos on the internet. Not a single one done by a college professor or by any of the show physicists or any of the million viewed videos or any of them that shows the two patterns and explains why there's two patterns or even explains why there's a double maxima in the center. None of them. Not a single one. And I have done that that the uh, charge is actually the result of, in fact, of these four spits, as you claim, okay? So that... Okay, so I'm just saying that, no, the, it, that's right overtly in the model. The model explains it. The two interactions explain why it goes in blue and it comes out red, and it goes in red and it comes out blue in the other case, and that explains it. You don't need any more explanation. That simple little mechanism, two opposite interactions between electrons and protons. They react oppositely in one circumstance. You put them in a circumstance, you can understand why they, op they, they react opposite and an opposite thing happens. And that's it, that's all you have to understand. Nothing complicated. They have one distinguishing feature and that one feature creates two products. And you just say one of them does this and one of them does that. Two, <laughs> you know, not complicated. That is your homework, but I kind of suspect that, no, there, there, it, it may be possible that uh, these force bits are too small to ever be seen or to be ever be detected. Well, of course, we already know that. That's a given. So this is something understand, understood a long time ago, a couple hundred years ago at least. It was already understood that, yeah, well, what's light doing? Well, light's bouncing off of stuff and bouncing to us. And so how do we see light? Because we'd have to find something smaller than light to bounce off the light. So obviously we can't see light. We can't see an electron without banging something into it that's going to be too big to leave the electron alone. You can't see something if you're moving it while you're trying to look at it. <laughs> okay, so that's not going to work. Duh. So yeah, we're never going to see them in any seeing sense. There's no way to observe them, okay, in their actual function during the day. All we can do is see their consequence. And that's what you have to explain, is what the product of the interaction is. Why did the product happen? So we can draw them, but we can't see them. We can model them in a simulation, but we can't see them. And where are you doing any of that? or to ever ever really get down to seeing that and you know now while that might be the case that's not you know the best physical evidence that you could present to anybody i mean we're, we're getting to like where we are with say string theory and, and string theory has a similar oh fuck this i mean this is just so stupid this i don't have my i'm not giving you an abstract mathematical insanely convoluted theory that depends on the invention of a silly word dimension that doesn't mean anything because we you know what dimension is supposed to mean which is spatial dimension so they're they're again wave particle. They they've ruined every fucking word. Doesn't mean anything anymore. Okay, the word dimension should be yes. We understand the 
three physical dimensions and the rule is they have to have right angles to each other there you're done okay when you have three of them or six sub dimensions you're all done up down left right forward back there you're done there's no room for any more dimensions thing where there's like uh yeah there's no experiment that can see the strings at that scale in which case uh i don't think that we're talking science anymore if you can't actually verify the oh whatever <laughs> you're not talking science anymore unless you can do the impossible and take a picture of something you can't take a picture of bullshit I mean, and again, you're throwing yourself on, under your own train. If that's going to be the train of your standards, show me a picture of it. Then you're out of luck also, fucked hard. Ugh, damn. Fundamental uh, assumptions of your theory. Now, I was trying to explain before that uh, you can do that, but you're, the things that you're fundamentally assuming have to already be accepted by mainstream science. Oh, it's just crap. Now, all that has to be agreed upon is experiments, okay? And so what experiments are we going to take seriously and what experiments are we going to say are bullshit? All right, so they've never had, they've never done an experiment showing that it takes four times more fuel to go twice as fast. So that's the explicit um, statement of their one-half mv squared. It absolutely takes four times more fuel to go twice as fast. We don't have a single experiment showing that. That's all we have to do in this argument, is point out where there is evidence or there isn't evidence. I mean, let's just argue the fucking experiments. Stern Gerlach, uh, you know, come up with an experiment and say, let's argue the experiment. So I'm giving you a couple of easy ones, right? I'm, I'm saying, let's, you know, let's talk about the experiment where you drop something on a scale and see how much it, its impulse weight is. And, you know, what I found was is that all you have to do is drop something one centimeter, one freaking little centimeter, and you doubled its weight. And then you drop it ten cent I mean, four centimeters, and you doubled it again. <laughs> you know, so, I, whatever. Play the game. So, for example, if, uh, you know, your, your theory is based on just the existence of electron, I mean, that's fine. If, if everything that your theory relied upon relied upon electrons, then there would be plenty of direct evidence for the electrons in that. Right. So that's what it has in it, is electrons and protons. And all I have done is gotten rid of your silly waves, your magical fields, your magical forces, and all that other crap. And I've created another particle that has momentum. That's just as physical as the matter bits, except it has motion and they don't. That would be perfectly valid. However, that is not the case with force bits. Uh, these things are not recognized by mainstream. So again, I, <laughs> they're recognized in the sense that, well, they're the bent geodesic that causes gravity. So even an argument about gravity, you, do you really understand that the bent geodesic moves at exactly the same speed as magnetism and electricity and light? So the bent geodesic is flowing okay it actually flows at the same speed so if you change something's gravity it takes a while for the flow to travel for any change in the amount of force of the stream so the stream changes force goes faster here and it takes time for the the speed to reach some other object some change in the amount of that um, the volume of the river so to speak so it's really just about the flow of something it can't be the flow of nothing. It has to be the flow of something. <sighs> Shit. And I think if they did have characteristics of matter, that our accelerator experiments would have seen them. All right, so more bullshit about accelerator experiments. Our accelerator experiments that produce no data you can actually look at. Oh, thanks. I'm really going to be convinced by that. Shit. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how they could es uh, have escaped. I mean, they've collided everything with everything else, with every kind of detector, and we have not seen anything. With right. We haven't seen anything but electrons and protons, <laughs> frankly, traveling through um, some sort of medium that we see the byproduct of the transfer. And that's all they really have, right? So they can show you all this technology and all these detectors and all this crap, but what is it really detecting? 
what's it really doing except looking at the byproducts of uh, an interaction just seeing what happens to the cloud okay and then they're just telling you stories about what li each little each little thing that shoots off they're telling you a story of little red riding that's little red riding hood and that's the wolf and that's the three little pigs they're just telling you stories about where this thing was and what happened to it they're not sitting there improving any of it or demonstrating any of it they're just telling you what their favorite story is corresponds to the force bit right so that would be the first reason why no one will take your your, your theory seriously. Oh, fuck you again. It's just, this is just, uh, you know, this standard is nonsense, frankly. Okay. It's just like evolutionists and, you know, the, the deniers and all the deniers are doing is pretending, well, it doesn't matter there's chromosomes. It doesn't matter that, uh, you know, you have these certain chemicals and it's, and you inherit them. It doesn't, you know, you're just sitting here playing a game telling me it doesn't matter until <laughs> the theory is accepted it's not accepted yeah I get that part uh, it hasn't been accepted until it's accepted yeah but if this is what persa persuasion requires is you'd already believe in it then well I can't really do the persuasion thing can I if you have to already believe in it before me before I can persuade you well that's a, a ludicrous and imbecilic standard Basically, because it starts with the invention of something that we're pretty sure doesn't exist or hasn't been found or can't be found. All right, so it's just more crap. What we know exists is stuff moving the speed of light. Something's moving the fucking speed of light in the fucking universe, and it's clearly not an outrageous piece of speculation to say it's actually a clump of something. Feynman used the word clumps. Okay, <laughs> and uh, certainly Einstein would have said, yes, it's clumpy quantized clumps that is not an uh, a disproven theory it's not a theory that can't be the right answer because you have some piece of evidence you have no evidence to prove it can't be clumps Ugh. right those are some pretty serious reasons not to believe two plus two plus two physics right okay okay now let's get on to our second thing now so that that's that's against the uh, the two force bits that's the first two the second two is the two kinds of interaction. Now, as I had demonstrated in the previous video, you know, we are expected to believe that you know, we have these different colored uh, particles. You know, one of them is a proton. Proton, we'll color that with a red circle and uh, an electron. Now, this could be any color, but I think the red and green show up nicely here. Yeah, they don't show up at all, so fail again. And that uh, we have the force bits, which are also red and green. And you let me know whether I'm not explaining this correctly. but. Uh, looks pretty simple so far that looks really simple okay red and green okay and then there's red and green little force bits and then the force bits will do two different things when they hit different colored objects yeah i like it thing is is that uh the basic property you have assigned is the thing that when the green bit goes into the red particle it will somehow become the opposite particle which is the red particle. Yes. So it just comes in here, it does something weird, and then, boom, it becomes red. That's exactly how you explained it in your video. Okay. Right. And the byproduct of that is a perfect description of why electrons and protons have opposite charge. Okay. Now, I think you both all agree that, uh, that we're trying to get this down to, say, Newtonian physics, all right? <clears throat> now, there's nothing in Newtonian physics that says that you can take any kind of particle of some property. Uh, yeah, there is. Okay, so let's say they were spinning. Okay, I'm using red and green. You're using red and green. It's, it's not red and green, okay? The universe isn't made out of red and green. It's a property. And you're saying there's a green property and a red property. So let's say the red was a spinning object. Okay, so it spun. So the force bit was spinning when it's red. And it hits and it stops spinning. So it it goes out the other side, not spinning. And then in the other case, okay, when it hits, it's spinning, and it hits the red object. So it hits the green object, it stops spinning, comes out not spinning. It hits the red object, and it continues to spin, and the spin energy causes the red thing, let's say, to spin in the direction, move in the direction that the red thing is moving in. It sticks, it stays connected to it. So it doesn't pass right through, 
it spins through the mush or whatever there is inside and it causes the whole object to spin something like that so there's a mechanical explanation for why there's a transition but you're just basically saying that yes you throw a triangle against a brick wall and you throw a, a square against the brick wall and you can get very different well that's not a great example because it's just points and flat side so I'll do a circle and a square you throw a circle at a brick wall it bounces in some sort of you know almost any direction back and if you throw a square at the brick wall there's only certain directions it bounces back I mean this is not oh fuck I have to so stretch my imagination to imagine how that's possible oh it's magical no, it's a really simple function. And you're just saying there's some physical dynamic that's rather simple that causes this difference in interaction, this subtle but substantial difference. And then have it magically convert into another... So he's using magical again. Yes, there's going to be functions that take place that I can't explain how they happen because, again, we can't see any of this stuff. And I'm just saying, yes, there's a simple function. You're not going to be able to present any model that where you don't present functions that happen that you have to just take on. Yes, it makes sense. It works. So, again, if you apply your own standards to your own theory, then you should go in the closet and just shut the fuck up by your own standards. This is too pathetic. Particle of a different property, right? So that's not what Newtonian physics is about. Newtonian physics is just about, you know... This part of who cares about this Newtonian physics thing? I'm not trying to do Newtonian physics. I mean, it is my argument that Newton had uh, just about everything right, <laughs> so he did pretty good. But of course, he doesn't. He didn't have the volume of evidence we have to to base to go further to understand more about charge and electrons and protons. So he couldn't do any of that charge stuff that we can do. So you know, frankly, what's this point? I've clearly pointed it out to you. I, you know, it's all momentum physics. And the only thing that has the momentum are the force bits. The matter is dead. It gets moved by forces. You want to know where the matter is going? Find out what force pushed it. It's that simple. And that perfectly fits the evidence. So it hits that particle and pushes it that way. That's Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics is not about you know this particle hitting that particle and then turning into something, you know, completely different. That's uh, so again, there's no there's no evidence that Newton wouldn't um, speculate about transitions, you know, things having a transition. He did so much chemistry. You think he doesn't understand the difference of liquid, solid, um, gas. He understood things could be in different states because of different conditions. So this is just bullshit that, oh, somehow Newton wouldn't agree that the, a process could take place that would change something. Yeah, I think he did. Oh, well, I mean, this is just so lame. Not what Newtonian physics is about. Newtonian physics is only about the collisions, right? So this is a problem. Right. So again, my theory obviously isn't about little steel balls bouncing into each other. That's not the theory, okay? I, yeah, I'm saying the elemental universe isn't made out of iron balls, okay? Yeah, it's not like that. Okay, it's made out of something else, all right? Something more elemental, electrons, protons, and the force that interferes with them, okay, that causes them to change their position in space. Uh, yeah, and no one ever is going to explain what those elements are made out of. You're never going to explain what your ether is made out of. You're never going to explain how it's positioned, how it moves, how it does anything. You're only going to be able to draw it as a little sparkly, you know. Here it is, positron. You're not going to show me what it's made out of. <laughs> you know, it's it's new, Newtonian. Is it a solid? Is it a liquid? Is it a gas? I mean, fuck you. This is just so fucking bullshit. That, you know, what you've done is that you're trying to explain the problem of how charge works, which is, you know, why is it a proton is attracted to an electron. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I've already explained it perfectly. One force applies momentum, the other force doesn't to the individual objects, and they do it exactly inversely, which explains 
charge and magnetism and gravity. All of it. All right, so let's say here, there's electron. And then we have, you know, our proton. Fundamental question, why are those two being pushed against each other? Now, let, let's suppose we believe your, your, your two interaction is true. Okay, let's just, so let's suppose the entire world has believed that. But then the question will become, well, Gary, how is it that the, the red bit coming in here turns into the green bit? That's still going to be a question. So he's still, he's just, he's just rephrasing the same objection that somehow you can't have a model that simple. That it's not possible that uh, this, whatever it is, uh, that something goes in the same, same color, I mean the different color, and comes out the same color. Not possible. It's too bizarre. Can't happen. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it can. That's still the fundamental reason why we get this interaction of the bits hitting the positron electron. That's so all you've done is you've taken one question, which is, you know, how does charge work and turned it into another, which is like, you know, how does one force bit turn into another? So uh, right. And it's this simple. There's only four little elements in the universe, two kinds of force, two kinds of matter and two kinds of interaction. So the whole thing is explained by just that tiny little bit of information. You know, and the force bits are moving the speed of light and the matter bits aren't moving at all until they acquire force bits, until there's force stuck to them. <laughs> yeah. That's it. All of physics explained by that simple model. And you're complaining. Shit. Exactly how does that help us, right? You've taken one difficult to explain problem and you know you you kind of helped uh, explain why they're getting pushed together because we can now see that you know there are particles that are hitting this thing and you know sometimes they react by actually pushing and then sometimes they don't so that you know the, the reason why they're being pushed they're coming is because they're being pushed you know that that kind of helps but fundamentally the world would still be left with yet another question which is non-Newtonian which is how one force uh, no I, I don't think anybody else is going to have that problem I don't think any logical reasonable person is going to find it too taxing for their brain to figure out that um, you know if I if I go through a car wash I get wet you know that my state changes I go in dry and I come out wet Ooh, a miracle <laughs> no, I don't think it's a miracle. It turns into another. So that is a mistake. Yeah, so, so w the, the electron makes things wet, right? It's water shooting out, and then the proton is hair dryers, right? So wet things go into the, the proton, and they get hair dryered, and they come out dry. And w dry things go into the, the electron, and they come out wet. He's saying that's so impossible to imagine that I could actually build two devices like that. You know, uh, a, a, a wet factory and a dry factory. And that it, there would be this simple mathematics that anything that went into the dry factory wet would come out dry, and anything that went into the wet factory would come out wet, come out dry. Can't make it double wet, can't make it double dry. question which still will still have to be answered by you and is just as mysterious as the original question which is why positive charges attract negative. so again there's just absolutely no point of having models or doing anything if you're going to say you can't draw the elemental parts and we'll just say accept the elemental parts existence there's just no way to model anything there's nothing i could draw on the board that you won't say where did that come from so what's the point it charges the only way you could solve this is if you actually got it down to a fully Newtonian explanation. Okay, well, yours is nowhere close, so fuck you in the ass till dead. I mean, you're just such a hypocrite. This is just such a waste of my time. I could, I could get three paragraphs, I mean, three sentences into your paper, and I could just do the same thing. Just say, fuck this theory, okay? He just said the word positron. What the fuck is that? Where you just said that the reasons why the, the proton is attracted to the electron is because there's more things just pushing on this and there's more things pushing on that and there's fewer things pushing in between, right? And that doesn't require any particles to convert themselves into anything. It just has to be just more stuff pushing this to push them, to push them together. And 
that would that won't work but okay I'm not gonna argue the sage gravity it doesn't work it's not complete enough it doesn't have enough elements to it that's why it doesn't work that's why it wasn't accepted It's because yeah just it only works for certain things and it but it's not going to explain charge it's just not going to do it okay I've been doing this for 10 years fuckhead I've drawn this over and over and over and over try to come up some way you can do it with one force and you can't it can't be done all right, you have to have the wet and dry principle. If you don't have the wet and dry principle, the fucking thing doesn't work. They can't be both dry factories. They can't be both wet factories. It doesn't work. Fuck. <laughs> be a Newtonian explanation. Now, I did explain, you know, how, say, I explain this, and that's exactly how I explain it, is that um, I just briefly, just as a comparison to how you can get this interaction. Now, you said that, you know, how can, how can I explain that these things are different without them being different? Well, they are different. And the, but the difference that I selected was a difference of phase, right? Yeah, a phase and have, have their jellyfish and they're constantly making, they're constantly waving the universe with waves. Going where? Everywhere? <laughs> you have no laser beam. You have no way of explaining this at all. Where all this extra energy goes. None of it. It's just all a pile of crap. Now you mentioned something very similar, which is like, say, polarization. Um, but, uh... Uh, you know, it's waving in every dimension at the same time. You know, so, so it's like these things have to be getting bigger and smaller constantly. Right? So an electron is some oscillating thing. It goes big and then small and big and small and big and small and big and small. And somehow, but it's not at a frequency because we'd already detect that if there was such a frequency. <sighs> Sorry, it doesn't work. The thing is with, with phase is that you can have exactly the same object um, in space. So, you know, my claim is, is that the positron and the electron are, in fact, exactly the same object. They're both, you know, electron-like particles. The only difference is that these things are putting out waves. And In what? Waves of what? In what? The only difference is that these waves are out of phase. So that when they come together... They Waves in what? Again, you've, you've, he's made the universe out of positrons and, and uh, electrons or some kind of bullshit. Big things. And he's saying there's waves of them. <laughs> you know, they're waving the other positrons. That's moving something as big as yourself. That's certainly not Newtonian. You can't do that. They cancel. And when they cancel, that means that the forces that, uh, that, that are between these two can't affect each other. And thus, all the forces on the outside still are working. So I would argue that in even physical waves in mediums, nothing really cancels. It's really sort of bullshit. The waves do travel through each other, blah, 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 blah. So all of these forces are still working, but the forces in between are not. I mean, I would explain that with like my hands. So let's say this is the waves that are coming from the proton, and this is the waves that are coming from the electron. Now, if they're out of phase, that means that when the proton pushes, the electron backs up. And when the electron pushes, the proton backs up. I know, but that, again, requires your electrons and protons to somehow be interacting with each other from explicitly red and black squares. That only, the electrons can only move on the black squares, and the electrons, you know, protons and electrons can only move on red and black squares, because they somehow have to always stay the same distance they have to stay a wavelength of distance away from each other they can never be a half wavelength because if they went a half wavelength your whole theory falls apart so so between the two it's like i cannot exert any force against my hands while they're doing that because they're out of phase now the thing is if they are in phase like i've got two protons then when they come together it's gonna be like like that my hand is, is going to be able to hit the other hand because it's not backing up right and if they're in the same phase they're actually colliding into each other so this is why the, the waves which are which are in phase can exert a force versus the waves which are you know, out of phase, which can... Right, the waves of what? Again, so what are you hitting the electrons and protons with? What is this wave stuff? What is this water that you're hitting with? Never actually touch each other, right? So notice, Gary, I did not use any non-Newtonian explanation in that. And... Uh, yeah, you just used an explanation that first won't create the actual functions of, uh, again, of explaining charge and magnetism. 
So, and you can only do it by, again, obligating protons to always be a wavelength of difference from each other, some multiple of a wavelength of difference. So they have to jump in space, jump in space. They can never be at any distance. They always have to be a wavelength of difference. So explain exactly what that wavelength is. What's this frequency that these things are functioning at? Because you can't use the electromagnetic spectrum, all right? You can't say that it's one kilohertz because clearly that's not what we detect. So it has to be some miracle frequency, some magical frequency. What, a billion gigahertz? I mean, it has to be some kind of frequency. <laughs> so what is it? Uh, anyway, whatever. That's just a, a matter of collisions and using phases. And we know how phases work. Uh, this. Mm. Well, you say you know how phases work. I speculate that most people don't know anything about this crap. This had in fact been demonstrated in an experiment 100 years ago using water and pulsing balloons and showed that, yes, this does actually create an attractive force. And that is an experimental confirmation. Oh, okay. An attractive force as strong as charge. So go ahead and show that. Go ahead and show that. Yeah, I'd be interested to see that. Let me see the attractive force as strong as charge. Of this idea. So you don't have to take it on faith that this sort of thing might occur. Because people have done experiments and shown... Well, let's see them. Okay, so link to an experiment. So I guess we'll have to, we'll have to look for that. Um, generating positron. So it's all just Wikipedia pages so far. Positron emission scanners work by injecting... A a isotopes that emit positrons and they are detected because they create gamma rays in the detectors. So they never see the po positrons. So let's understand when they call it a positron admission, it doesn't admit positrons. No. What the theory is, is that it emits a radiation that causes some other isotope inside your body to radiate positrons. And those positrons cause some other element in your body to radiate gamma rays. So the positrons are somehow in your body doing the thing in between, but they never exist in one of the beams. There's no beam of positrons, you know, so it's all really quite a lie, frankly. Uh, so positron beams can be created by firing lasers at gases. So again, more talk, but yeah, prove it. Uh, you know, positron spectrum spectrometer uh, built to accurately measure positrons. So they, yes, they made a positron detector out of positrons. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is too silly. So positron beams, there he says it's are used to treat cancer. It's not positron beams. So that's just bullshit. Doesn't happen. Uh, and are created by stripping electrons off hydrogen. Yeah, well, sorry, that doesn't create a positron. That creates a proton. <sighs> All right, so no point. All right, uh, maybe we'll leave this here and I'll finish up later or something. He's, you know, defending his own mushy theory now. So, so anyway. Uh, it's just, you know, like I said, there's really no point. Let's argue evidence, experiments, um, you know, because the, the, obviously your standards of what is reasonable and logical are completely different than mine. And uh, the fact that you can't understand that I go into a car wash and my car gets wet and it comes out wet, not dry, uh, you know, I'm saying bullshit, you can't understand that. <laughs> so you're just looking for excuses. And fine, go ahead and do that. But don't call it, hey, look at that, I've dissected your... Th you didn't dissect anything. So, whatever. Not very useful, unfortunately. I mean, if that's what... If this is what we're going to debate, the fact that you, I find your theory silly. Okay, I find your theory silly. <laughs> there you go, okay. And we'll just leave it at that. And we won't bother with the details. Because obviously you're a hypocrite. I mean, if you can be opposed to saying it's too hard, it's magic to say that there's a car wash and it makes cars wet. That's a match. That's resorting to magic. 
if that's going to be the standard, then again, like I said, I'm not going to get through two sentences of your theory without saying the same thing to you. So um, obviously we're not going to be able to, uh, in any useful way, um, dissect actual experimental evidence. So why don't you show me a piece of evidence demonstrating the existence of one half mv squared as the truth. Or show me a piece of evidence, okay, that um, you can explain the double slit pattern with two waves interfering with each other. Show me how the two waves create the two patterns. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, show me. Till then, you're just talking shit, frankly. Frankly. Okay, so anyway, till the next time and such. Disappointing. But I, I'd already written off Franklin Hughes, so I'm not losing anything. I mean, like I said, he can't can't figure out how this really works, this exchanging video thing. So it wasn't going anywhere anyway. Um, so till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. This has been a DraftPhysics.com video presentation. DebatePhysics.com also. I mean, I guess I can post this video as part of the uh, debate, but I mean, I'm just, what's the point? There's, you know, it's, it's not a useful argument um, to say, you know, to look at these little blue and red things and then say, well, why are those red and why are those blue? It's just not a useful argument. It doesn't mean anything. Can't possibly work as an argument because those questions will never be answered by any physicist. All right. There are some things that are just elemental. They just are. That's why there's a universe, because it just is. Okay, Not because of any other reason. Not because there was some other universe that created it. <laughs> you know, whether you call the other universe God or anything else. Uh, but whatever. Ugh. God, I hate this planet.